What's going on folks, it is I, Napalm. Thank you guys again for watching the video, if you could be so kind as to leave a like, comment if you're new to the channel, and subscribe to keep up to date with the videos that I post, I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, thanks again for watching the video guys, enjoy! Now it's time for some checks and balances, freelance police style. Max, will you do the honors? Gladly! Look it fellas, my fingertips look like little tadpoles! They just don't make these guys like they used to. That's no guy, Max. It's a damned ugly puppet. Ah, the drawstring in his back should have been our first clue. Our first clue should have been the swirly eyes. But, silly me, I thought hypnotizee, not hypnotizer. What? Yes, an ingenious device being used to hypnotize the TV-watching public. But who was controlling him? Gonna take days to get that smell out of the interrogation room. What? What have you done? He was like that when we got here. Sam did it! <laughs> so these two numbskulls managed to off the president. It was a deep tissue massage gone horribly wrong. Ninjas! Sam did it! Still, ratings from the last State of the Union address were even lower than reruns of Midtown Cowboys. I didn't expect to have to replace the president so soon, but now that these idiots have forced my hand... Uh, we're standing right here. We can hear everything you're saying. It's time for a leader the people will have to listen to. Agents Jackson, Burr, and Degambe, we are moving the timeline forward. Commence phase two of the operation. I'll prepare the new candidate. Not quite the reaction I would have expected from a Secret Service agent discovering two people over the decapitated body of the President. What do you think this fake body is made of? Can I keep it? No time for that now, Max. We've got to stop the... Wait, what's that noise? Blessed scuba diving Buddha on a banana boat with cocktail onions and a map to the stars' homes. Yeah! They've reanimated America's most beloved president. I always thought Taft was shorter. Not Taft, you deficient. My fellow Americans, I am Abraham Lincoln. As you know by now, your president was recently murdered by two mysterious interpreters. But turn not to fear and despair. I have returned to guide us through this troubled time. A vote for me is a vote for Abraham Lincoln. I'll get it! What's that? Uh-huh. Lincoln Memorial. Right. Hydraulic motors and robotic implants. Yes. Okay. I see. We're on it. Wrong number? That was the commissioner, Max. If this new Mecha Lincoln wins the emergency election, the nefarious forces controlling him will have unchecked power to destroy the entire free world. I hate when they do that! That's why one of us is going to have to run against him. You got to answer the phone! Okay, fair's fair. Max, we're going to make you the next President of the United States. Mr. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Hmm, I see. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware, I'm the most beloved president in history. So I just assumed I'd be running unopposed. Oh no, you didn't! You ain't all that! I freed the slave! I was star of a popular television sitcom. I'm on the penny. I was on TV. Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through moderate reasoned debate. Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring it. And it's a beautiful day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. President. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the Random Violence and Destruction Party, there is the hyperkinetic, rabbit-like creature known as Max. Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates are ready, so let's listen in. Contestants, it's time for our lightning round. 
Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing prepared. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. And Lincoln is once again using his trusted campaign slogan, which is pleasing the crowd, but having no effect on his poll ratings. Where do you stand on religion and schools? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Lincoln pulls out his trusted catchphrase for this election, which delights the crowd, but seems to have no effect on the polls. How would you describe your tax plan? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. And Lincoln dodges the question by pulling out his trusty campaign slogan, which pleases the crowd but has no effect on the polls. That's enough for now. Keep them coming. I'm ready for anything. Mr. Lincoln, perhaps you'd like to speak about the importance of family values. Of course. A strong family unit is the rock upon which our society is built. It's easy today in this age of your blinged out horseless carriages and racy daguerreotype magazines to believe that honesty and fidelity are outdated concepts. But I stand proud. I have been completely faithful to my lovely wife, Mary Todd, for over seven score years. I've never even looked at another woman. Mr. Lincoln, could you elaborate on your stand on family values? Without a strong, honest, and faithful family, we are all nothing. I myself have been faithful to my wife for over 150 years. Mr. Lincoln, the networks are looking for a soundbite. Would you care to share a few words with us? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I said basically the same thing. Greetings, miserable proles! People of Earth, your day of reckoning is at hand! <coughs> this election reminds me of a droll story. It seems Chester A. Arthur and the Pope were kayaking down the Amazon one day. Suddenly, a tiny kandiru fish swims up the Pope's and lodges itself in his Arthur grabs the Pope's pliers and swelled up like a melon. And the Pope says, thanks. Last time that happened, McKinley wanted to No, wait, wait, wait. I think I told it wrong. I believe in the ideal of a global community where America is but a small part. We must set aside our differences and work with our fellow nations, all united towards one goal. The complete and utter annihilation of the godless Belgians. I want to see a return to the prosperity of the America we once knew. A chicken in every pot and vice versa. If elected, I promise a return to a happier time in America's past. The days when giant thunder lizards marched over the fern-covered marshes of the Midwest, preying on the upstart mammals. I'm a uniter, not a divider. I foresee an America under one rule, an iron-fisted rule. One rabbit, one law. Let your neighbors know that dissent will not be tolerated. All hail Max. I have a dream, America. It starts out where I'm in an all-nude production of Death of a Salesman on Ice, but I haven't studied and I can't remember my lines. Suddenly, it begins to rain marshmallows, but that's okay, because trees are made of graham crackers, and chocolate bars are the official currency. I believe that by working together, we can make that dream a reality. 
We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And the Chupacabra, Madre de Dios, he'll kill us all! That is all. Stay frosty, America. I had a feeling that wasn't going to work. Kill me once, shame on you. Kill me twice, shame on me. It's the cue cards for Lincoln's speech. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Free home delivery. It's time for another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Mr. Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. Very well. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? Free home delivery. Ooh, an effective but very controversial proposal from candidate Lincoln. And the crowd did not like that idea one bit. Let's see how it affected the polls. Give me all you got. How would you describe your tax plan? Give me all you got. And candidate Lincoln has proposed one shocker of an economic strategy, which even Democrats are calling a trifle excessive. That had to have hurt him in the polls. I'm glad that I've been... Two wrongs don't make a right. Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make a right. Did we hear that right? Lincoln just came down against both religion and education. Wow, that's gotta hurt him in the polls. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to say a few words to the audience? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I've heard better addresses from the 411 operator. What did you just say? Hey, Lincoln! Captain Ahab called! He wants his beard back! I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk! Save it for the debate, Max. It's Lincoln's campaign flyer. I want you. Honest, dedicated, over a century of experience, Abraham Lincoln is your man. What's this? A new application? Yeah, it's uh, for a friend of ours. Let's see. Not THE Abraham Lincoln. He's tall, distinguished, loves the theater. He sounds perfect. <laughs> That chump doesn't have half my cute, fluffy marketability. Do you think your computer can find him a date? Computer? Nothing. This guy sounds perfect for me. Oh, but he didn't leave his phone number. Next time you see him, give him my number. I'd love to meet him. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Hello? Abe? Is that you? I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. Oh, well, Mr. President, it's just, it's just such an honor to talk to you. I saw your application and I was wondering, would you like to go out sometime? This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Oh my, you are a charmer, aren't you? Well then, Mr. Rail 
yourself, Slither. Where would you like to meet? I stand here at the steps of the White House. At the White House. Got it. What time should I meet you? The time to act is now. Oh, I love that decisiveness. I'll rush right over. I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk. What? I didn't catch that last part. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. What? Abe? What's going on? Uh, see you soon. Gotta go. So, to sum up, Family values are the bedrock of this nation. Our fidelity, honesty, and loyalty to family is our most sacred asset as Americans. Candidate Max, your rebuttal? Yoo-hoo, Mr. Lincoln! I believe we have a question in the audience from someone who is not Candidate Lincoln's wife. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, Max. Greetings, random harlot! Abe, I'm here! Are you ready for our date? What? I, I've never seen this woman before in my life. But on the phone you sounded so eager to meet me. Listen to me, America. I did not arrange a date with this woman. Oh, so she's good enough to fool around with, but not to date. Mr. Lincoln, I can't believe you're doing this to me. <laughs> The results from the emergency election are coming in. And it appears that former sitcom star Max has been elected President of the United States. In an unprecedented show of bipartisan solidarity, all of the country's political parties have desperately asked for a recount. Let's cut to the White House lawn to hear candidate Lincoln's address. You've got to be b***ing me, you idiots! He took the news much better than expected. Democracy? I will make you all my hypnotic slaves! <laughs> Max, that robotic Abe Lincoln will enslave the entire East Coast if we don't stop him. Who cares? I'm the president of the U.S. Let's go bomb someone into oblivion. Not just anyone, Max. Abe Lincoln must die. Yes! 